Hi everyone and welcome back to the Color Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Tim Jeffs and I'm an illustrator and artist that draws animals and concentrates on drawing endangered animals. I have a line of grayscale coloring books out. Grayscale coloring is incredibly easy once you give it a try. People get intimidated by it, but they just don't need to be. You just need to grab your pencils, start coloring, and I promise once you start, you just won't be able to stop. So I have a few different books that are available. Um, these are published hardback books called Intricate Ink Animals in Detail. This is the first one in the series, which has 50 illustrations in it. Uh, and this is the latest, this is volume five. So you can find these on Amazon. They're really fun once you start doing them. Really nice paper to use. Another book I have from Coloring Heaven is Endangered Animals. It has 48 drawings in it that you can color. I also have a line of digital coloring books uh, that you can buy on my Etsy shop. You can download those. And the nice thing about my digital books is that you can print them out as many times as you want, unlike a regular book. One lucky winner will win this book today. So for today's Cave Miss video, Jem is going to color an animal from endangered species. She is going to do the orangutan. She'll show you uh, how to do that. Thank you so much for trying my books out. And I want to thank Jem for having me. And uh, let's get going. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tim Jeffs. Thanks, Tim. Really appreciate that. Thanks for being a good sport and participating in this, which is day seven of Cavemus. So as Tim mentioned, I am going to be colouring their our little orangutan friend here. I am colouring in the Endangered Animals Colouring Heaven special. And this is just my personal copy. It's exactly the same as the image that's in the book that's up for grabs today in the giveaway at the end of the video. It's just got a black background. So same pencil rules apply. And we're going to do a really good job of this. And we're going to make... Tim approve hopefully of what we're doing he hasn't seen this by the time the video goes up he will have not seen the final colouring either so no pressure you know so we're going to go on the usual route this is going to be a more of a chatorial style video so I will sort of you know do my usual I'll talk away while we're going but I will explain what I'm doing as well so in addition to the book itself I am using my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils today these are one of my favourite sets of pencils for layering which I find is particularly important especially when you're working with a dynamic subject such as orangutan fur I'm particularly drawn to this picture because I've got a little bit of an obsession with orangutans and it is on my bucket list. I do want to go to the orangutan baby school where they rehabilitate orphans, get them basically set up to live out in a sanctuary with other orangs. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to the picture. When I'm doing stuff like this, I usually like to start with the face. I find it's the easiest place to kind of get going. So I've picked out some basic colours just to get started. As I add more in along the way, I shall let you know. So I'm starting off with a light flesh and we'll get zoomed in a little bit just so you can see my pencil work. And we're just going to work in all these areas where this colour is going to be relevant. So straight away you can see I'm as far back as I can hold the pencil while still steadying it. And with a really, really light pressure, literally just letting the, the paper sort of, you know, tickle the pencil or vice versa. And I just want to put this base colour down. And I do this with all my colourings. For those of you that are here regularly, you'll know. I kind of map out where all my colours are going. And it's just so that things make sense in my head. And if there's something I'm not quite sure about, I can tweak it without too much hassle. Because if you've got a, a really heavy layer of pencil, that then becomes much, much more difficult with coloured pencils. So I'm covering his whole head area initially. Look at that little face. He's so cute. Orangutans are one of my favourite animals to draw as well and I think it's just because they're very expressive and they're also incredibly clever and very cheeky as well. That's why I like them. It's actually similar to the reason that I enjoy pigs. I, you know, here on the farm I don't have any pigs and I've been bugging Mr. Jem for years to let me get pigs and he won't let me do it. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's absolutely bare minimum see we'll just stick with the face just now because it's a nice a nice easy place for us to start if you look at reference images of orangutans they have lots of different colorings and markings within this 
sort of standard rings around their eyes and then the ring around their mouth. And it's just like humans, you know, everybody's got their own sort of defining marks, as it were. So I want to work on the darker skin first. And I'm going to grab sepia. And I want to start thinking about the areas that I'm going to make darkest on the face. So that's not going to include these rings around the eyes or the part around his mouth. So you can see Tim's left indications here in these areas here where these darker areas are. So that's where I'm going to concentrate my sepia pencil. And I'm just using very soft flicking motions here. And again, there's not really any need at this stage to press hard. So I'm just going to follow that line right up and round. This area is going to be quite dark in here. I'm really pleased to see that this little orangutan's got what I call a hairdo. You know, he's got a proper halo of like chaotic hair and th that's that just makes them you know all so much more full, full of character so he's obviously a bit of a hairy mary this little guy and we want to do the same under these nose areas just following tim's lines really roughly it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and then in these paler areas here i want to switch almost to the side of my pencil and again i'm holding it really really far back and that's to stop me pressing down hard and I just want to put a layer of this on top of the light flesh. So we're not wanting to indicate any texture here because this is more like skin, you know, there's more skin than hair here. So we want to keep that really, really soft. And it doesn't look like much now, but by the time we've built everything up, it will. So you can see the difference already between this section here and this section here. And all I've done is put that one light layer of the sepia down and it's made all the difference. I'm just going to do the same down around this little cheek area as well. Now the next two colours might not seem such an obvious choice. And that is Delft Blue. And I also have a magenta pencil here. And this is just to bring some different tones to, to their skin. And I'm going to start in his little nose area here. So I'm going back to my little flicky motions that I used before. I just want to bring this up. So we only really want a hint of this, you know, we don't want, we don't want a huge amount. So I'm focusing on this, this area here and then maybe down the sides here, especially on this darker bit. And then he's got these cute little kind of wrinkly bits around his face as well. He's so cute. And again, the same thing up in this sort of top part of his forehead. Just pop a little bit of that in. So I hope you guys are all enjoying your festive celebrations, if that's what you're doing. If not, I hope you're having some relaxing time off. If you're sitting here watching these videos, that's always a good thing. I am I am thoroughly enjoying myself. I'm filming this a little bit in advance, so I'm not completely wound down for, for the festivities yet. You know, I'm still working in things, but I, uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Now that I'm into the cavemus rhythm, it's all good, it's all good. Right, so I'm going back to my flesh pencil now and we're just going to start to build up this colour. So I'm going to, obviously this is going to be blending in with the sepia and the delve blue that we've just put down. Again, no pressure here really. So we just want to work away between the sepia, the delve blue and the light flesh now and build up this area. So I'm thinking we might, might even leave a little bit of a highlight, that might be quite nice. So we can make them a little bit darker around these edges here and especially going down into this temple area. This is going to be significantly darker so I'm laying down a lot more of the sepia here and we'll blend that in with his, his fur when we get to that stage as well. So Mr. Jem, my husband's currently outside and he is hanging our Christmas lights. So if you hear a bit of random <laughs> crashing and banging, it's just Mr. Jem falling off his ladder. Everything will be fine. So I'm going to keep this section in the middle here just that little bit lighter. When I'm jumping between the Delft and the sepia pencil, every now and then I'm just jumping back in with a layer of this light flesh just to kind of blend it all together and make sure it doesn't get too purple or too brown kind of like a balancing colour. So we've got this section down in the middle of his nose here and having looked at quite a lot of different orangs, it, they, this, this section really varies. Sometimes it seems to be really pale and other times it seems to be quite, quite dark. So I think I would like to land roughly somewhere in the middle because these eye sections here are very, very pale. So I'll just pop in a wee bit here of this uh, light flesh colour again. And then very sparingly with this sepia pencil, we can put in a few lines. And once again, the convenience of grayscale, Tim has indicated some of these already. And they're kind of like nose creases or under eye creases. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how you want to describe them. Uh, but that's really helpful to have that there. I can put in a little bit more delft in under the eyes here. Now, the thing about orangutan's eyes is their irises are actually like a really, really dark brown. They're not black, 
but just because of the generally the way the light hits them they do look as if it's like a solid black circle and unless an orangutan has a really expressive look on their face you tend not to see the whites of their eyes so Tim's indicated that pretty well here so I'm going to take the darkest brown that I have which is the walnut brown and I'm going to pop a little bit of this in first. Now we need a really sharp pointy point because we're working in quite a small area here. Now what I'm doing here is I'm avoiding the highlights that Tim has left. You can always put them in with a white gel pen or a, um, like a Posca pen. But I want to get a nice sharp line around that highlight because that is one of the most adorable things, particularly about baby orangutans, if you've ever seen pictures of them. They've got these big massive eyes and it's like all the little highlights that just makes them look super, super cute. Now to go in on top of that, I've gone with a Warm Grey, f uh, warm grey 6, sorry, I nearly said Warm Grey 5 there. And I just want to darken this down without it actually being black. Because I think if you lose black, especially when you're doing animals' eyes, I think you, you lose a lot because of it and it kind of takes away from the picture. But he is just like super, super adorable, this little guy. And then just the same over here on the other eye. Now we're going to have to even up these highlights. They are quite uneven. And that's probably me being a bit, uh, a bit overexcited on this side. But if I just cut this one down and then go in with my grey again. Now we can add or take away from that a bit more. But again, I just want to sort of start working down the way here. So I'm back Back to my light flesh pencil and we're going to work on these eye socket areas so I'm being a bit more generous with my pressure here so I'm up to kind of like a like a middle pressure and I'm just blending out around the outside first because this you know it's all part of the same animal so it does have to look as if it's meant to be there so I'll do a little bit of blending and then I'll gradually bring this in right down over these eyelids. So the other two pencils I want to use in this eye area is the dark flesh and also Pompeian red and we're just going to use that for in some of the creases around his eyes as well. So when we're thinking about this eye socket here, there's going to be varying degrees of folds around his, around his little eyelids here. And once again, the beauty of grayscale and Tim has marked these in so very, very lightly where that hatching line is just above his eye socket. I put a tiny little bit of the dark flesh down and I'm going back over it with the light flesh and that's just to soften it out it's almost like um, like eyeshadow <laughs> and then the same underneath here and then with my Pompeii in red this is where you want to sort of get into the creases so this is this is literally just like following Tim's lines that he's already done and just build it up very very slowly and then back with this light flesh again and then we're just going to work our way around here very softly, very gently. And just add in a little bit more a step at a time. We're just going to head over to this eye and we're going to do exactly the same thing as we've done over here. So I'm hoping by the end of today I will have some festive lights up outside of the house. And I have the last layer of paint to put in my kitchen. That's what I'm going to be doing later. We've been renovating our kitchen for what seems like an eternity. And we're finally getting there. So we're just getting that last coat of paint on before the workmen come to fit the new floor. And that will be done in time for Christmas Day. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So again, just using this darker pencil a little bit more closer into the eye sockets. And that's just to denote that that's starting to dip in, you know, where the, where the actual socket is. It helps to just bring a little bit of life to the paper. I do this in very, very tiny increments. Just so that if we're not entirely sure of an area or we're not certain that's the way we want to leave it, we have loads of scope for making those tweaks and you know just making life that little bit easier for ourselves now for his nose down here they often have quite dark noses and i feel like i want to introduce a little bit more of this paler color so i'm gonna have like this bottom section of his nose here and maybe just up around the first part of the nostrils in this flesh colour, you know, very similar to what we've got going on with the eyes. And then again, I'm just going to take this delved blue and sort of give him a, like an, almost like a little halo around his nostrils there. I've kind of left his chin area alone just now, just because we want to kind of like blend that in with this fur around the outside. So I'm going to switch over to his ear. And again, I'm just really jumping between the these three sort of more flesh tone pencils. So again, light flesh first and foremost and just get a layer of that down over his little ear and I'm going to grab the Pompeii in red I think and just kind of work away in these crevices a little bit 
and we'll get some of those lines in there. And again, all we want to do is follow Tim's lines here with a soft, a soft touch and then blend them out just so that they're not quite so harsh. And again, we'll just fade this out gradually. So we're feathering this out to almost nothing in here. Keep this outside side edge nice and light as well. So moving down here now, we want to sort of start to join these parts up. So I'm go kind of going back to what I was doing up here. And that is, let's get this light flesh on the go. And we can blend it in with this Delft blue that we've put down already. So again, just alternating with this light flesh pencil, just to keep everything all blended together. Better to have lots of light layers and a nice blended tone than too much of one or the other. Now down under here, this is really kind of heading into chin territory. So I do want to make that a little bit darker. So I've got this walnut brown again, which is what we used in the eyes. And I just want to sort of really dig into these darker lines that Tim's left. And I'm using this flicking motion again, so it's more like hair than anything else. And this is really just a reminder for me just now, we're not gonna get into the sort of finished state of that right this second. So I want to, st I want to start on some of his hair because he's quite got rather a lot of hair. So again, if we can just like go around this face area, that gives us a really good indication of whether our colors are working well together. The first color I want to start with is the Burnt Sienna. So again, we're gonna use these flicking motions and I'm not wanting to cover the entirety of this. So I'm just gonna take this tuft of hair as a starting point here. You know, this kind of like, part beside his head. And then moving into the more orange tones, uh, I've got here at uh, Sanguine. We want to bring in that nice rich sort of orangey red that you see. It's like classic orangutan colour. Nice long flicky strokes here. And we can do this all the way around the top of this head section. You want to keep your pencil fairly sharp for this as well so that you've got these nice, nice lines and it means you can get some definition on some of your layers. All the activity outside seems to have stopped. I'm assuming I have a full set of, uh, of Christmas lights now. I'll have to go and investigate once I'm finished. Okay, so we're starting to get a bit of colour about us now. So I've got terracotta here as well. And what we want to do is where the, the light would catch the hair. So that tends to be more at the ends. We want to use more of this lighter shade. So I'm really working that in at the tips here. This section here I do think is actually his arm hair. This is not his, his, his head hair. And that kind of like merges into the back there. So I want to make sure that there's quite a distinction. So I'm going to make that mostly terracotta just so that we've got that idea that there's a difference between the two sections and we can work a wee bit more on that just in a little while. Now the closer the hair is to the head, naturally the darker it is. So what we want to do now is start to give this boy some roots. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use more of the burnt sienna, but I'm gonna keep it close to that hairline. So I'm using much shorter strokes now. You can see the color starting to build up in here. And this is kind of flicking up over what's going on here. And you maybe have an odd one that moves further up. You know, you do want to keep it quite natural looking, so you don't want it to be too uniform all the way around. And then we can just jump between the terracotta and the sanguine now, and we can start to really blend these together. Again, varying your pressure, you know, some lighter strokes, some harder strokes, some longer, some shorter. And that's what will build up this nice sort of fur effect. And right down at the hairline there, just to darken that down that little bit more, I'm going to jump back to my walnut brown pencil. And in certain places, especially down at the ears here, we're going to add a little bit more of that in and really soften that out. Now we've got this section here. Now in behind here, I'm convinced that there's like an extra layer of fur. So in these certain sections, I'm just adding in this dark pencil to show that there's more in behind. And what that's doing is just giving us a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to do the same here. So once you're happy that your that your color patterns right, especially when you're using so many layers and so many pencils, and this is very particular with fur and feathers, once you're happy that you've kind of got the colors going in the right places, it's just a case of going back and forth. And this part is very repetitive, but it's the time spent here that will make it worthwhile. So I'm just gonna work away for a little while here. So you can see the difference from this section here to this section here. And this is the thing you've got to remember when you're doing any sort of fur or hair. Hair has many different colours in it. It's not all one shade of brown or, you know, one shade of brown with a highlight. There's lots of different colours in everyone's hair. And little orangutans, they're no exception. And again, this darker section that we've, that we've sort of made in behind, I'm making a point of making that look a bit more solid. 
because it's tucked in behind. So now we've got some contrast here. What you can see has happened is it's made his forehead look really, really washed out. And what I want to do is just try and warm that up and bring it in a bit. So I've now got burnt ochre, but I'm also going to use that magenta pencil that I talked about right at the start. And in these areas where I've got my, my Delft blue, and at the sides here, I'm going to use that magenta pencil. And you can see that's just warming his skin tone up without being really sort of overbearing. And that I, again, I've looked at a lot of pictures and the, the variety of shade and colour that's in this darker part of the skin, it's really, really varied depending on which little guy you're looking at. So you've got a lot of artistic freedom here. And I would say not to be scared of it, you know, you don't, just because it's a colour that you wouldn't normally associate with something like this. Uh, you know, especially when you have very large sets of pencils like this set of polychromos. There's 120 pencils in there. But don't be scared to go back to basics and use your, your primary colours to really, you know, add a little bit more to it. And you wouldn't really think that magenta would be the ideal colour for this, but... If you just uh, put a little bit down at a time like we talked about. So that's really warmed his head up a little bit. It just looks a little bit less flat now as well. So I'm going to bring this in more or less to the middle. And then using this ochre pencil as well. Okay, and this is just to add a bit of warmth. It's also going to bring a little bit of uniformity to the picture because this is more in keeping with the, the actual like hair colour. Again, very, very sort of mottled you know that their skin isn't uniform there's a lot of different patches of color depending on where you're looking so I'm instantly much more satisfied with that and that was just a tiny little tickle of those pencils and then back to my light flesh color here so when it comes to this skin part here where he doesn't have a lot of hair again imagining that it, this is clearly a much younger animal so I would tend to think that there would be more of this sort of baby pink showing through rather than this more weathered skin that's around the nose area so that's the kind of color set i'm going to use for this but we're going to have to be careful and making sure we're blending it all in so that it looks relatively seamless so we'll bring that right up there he's, he's got very hairy arms though which is nice and we'll bring this down here and this is a really good natural stopping point here where this arm curves round and that's just really helpful if you're just wanting to work a section at a time so i'm just going to start filling in this underside of his face here and going back to these original colors that we that we started with i'm going to keep them quite light though and i'm not bringing them all the way down because what i want to do here is i want to start bringing in some of the, this hair color because i feel as if he's he's maybe got a bit of a hairy a hairy chin so if we just again build up those sort of indicators of where we want that hair to to be and maybe maybe his hair's coming down i'm i'm looking at tim's lines here and trying to decide what he was thinking when he drew it and he has a lot of long really sort of curved lines here so i'm going to take advantage of that and make it hair even though it's you know you could have it the other way around and make him much more sort of baby faced i'll maybe do the same just a little bit around here as well why not? So now really we can finish off this skin area. So as I mentioned earlier, we're coming to that time where both Mr. Gemma and I are starting to wind down for for the, the Christmas break. And this is the first year that him and I have not had cows to calve over Christmas. That's saying something in eight years. So we are, we're actually really looking forward to having some proper time off. We have staff that are working this year and we've always had to kind of do it ourselves before, but we don't actually have any cows calving. All our cows don't start calving till January now. So that's super, super nice. I'm just kind of paying attention to these little creases under the eye here. So I'm actually having some proper time off. And I think I've probably mentioned this in a, in a previous Cavemas video already, but uh, I'm actually taking a break from my full-time job as well. So I'm, I'm actually getting a proper rest. And with everything that's been going on, we've had very a very tumultuous time on top of all COVID pandemic type stuff as well. So... We're, we're so ready to have a break. So I'm kind of looking forward to it. <laughs> 
But this is this is one of the last videos I have to film for Cavemus as well. Looking at the picture now that his face is really kind of coming to where I want it to be, but I just feel as if there's a few parts that, that aren't really join up. And this part under his neck is a prime example, and I want that to be a good bit darker, so I'm grabbing this Delft pencil. Now bearing in mind I've already put down some of these hair colours as well. So I don't want to be taken away from that too much, but I still want there to be quite a quite a considerable shadow under there. And then just grab one of my browns, it doesn't really matter which one. I think this is the walnut brown. Get more of a sort of definitive chin going on there. <laughs> I'm going to kind of leave this side of his face here because I'm going to do quite a lot of work on this fur. And that's going to like butt right up against here. So I'm not too concerned about what's going on down this line here for now. I just want to work on this chest area. So again, that's back to the flesh pencils in the Pompeian red. So taking the dark flesh colour, again, Tim has kindly left us these hatch lines. So that lets us see where some of the contours are. Now, obviously this is going to be a curved shape because it's an arm. So we can add in the, the darker color here on this outside area. And I'm gonna bring this in quite dark in here as well because that's going into like his arm here. So we want to have a nice base in behind that so that when we start putting these darker colors down that there's, you know, that you're still gonna be able to see the skin through that. And then back to my light flesh color. And there's least hatching down here. You can see there's hardly anything in there. So we want that to be our lightest area. And I think I want it a little bit darker here. And then this area here's looking really pale. So we'll just stick to the light flesh here. So when I'm working in areas like this where I've got something soft coming out over the top, if I'm working with another colour, I will always pull my pencil strokes out in the direction that the hair's going. And it's just so that, if, especially if you're using soft pencils like Prismacolors, because any pencil that you pick up of the opposite colour, so in this case, these orange colours, if you have your pencil strokes going in the direction that you had the hair going in, it's only going to drag the colour out and soften it. So you're just kind of like accentuating the the hair and it's not going to muddy up what you're doing too much because it looks as if it's supposed to be there. That's a really handy hint if you're trying to layer stuff up and you don't want to have to pick your way in between each individual strand because that's boring and it takes forever. So I'm going to have a little bit of colour here and the same on this side. Again, we're kind of intermingling with the the hair here but that's okay and I'm just going to bring that right all the way down here all the way down here we've got his little little nipple to deal with as well I don't think I've ever colored in an animal nipple but today is the day it's the, fir the first time for everything <laughs> god love him <laughs> I have a very restless dog today one of my collies uh, he is I don't know what's wrong with him but he's just he's just not a happy camper at all and he keeps getting up and pacing about and huffing and puffing maybe the 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 erection of the Christmas lights is upset him, I don't know. <laughs> right, it's time to go back to a bit of hair work and I'm not going to be doing anything different than I've been doing around here so I'm not going to explain my way through this and I'll just catch up in a few minutes. Okay so in this section here now you can see I've been a bit more selective with what I'm doing and again it's a bit like what's going on up here, there are two distinct sections of fur because we have the, the arm coming down into the elbow and then we've obviously got his the rest of his fur in behind that. Uh, you know, there's quite a, quite a sort of defined line there. And again, like down here, Tim's defined that by putting in extra shading lines, which is really helpful for us. So what I'm doing is I've started like a second dark line. Rather than just having dark to light from here to here, you can see by having this lighter colour in the middle, I've created this curvature over the top of the arm. And it's quite important that we keep that. So again, with the darker brown, I'm just making sure that I have a sort of semi uniform line down here just to denote that 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 is the bottom part of his arm that's coming out and then we can use the other colors and sort of bring them into the middle and then we can use this lightest color which is the terracotta just in this middle section here and then again at these ends one of the things i find so appealing about orangutans is that their hair is very wayward it's a bit like these long-haired guinea pigs you get i just love them i think they're amazing they just make me smile so much so, so much. And you can see there that his head's kind of like, you know, he's, he's pulled his shoulder up and forward there. He's kind of like scrunched it up just because the way he's hanging on and he's, he's kind of compressed on this side. So we've got this nice line here that denotes that too. Now I'm just, I'm taking Tim's lines here as just a cue 
when it comes down to hand areas, again, depending on the orang, some have got really hairy hands, some are more like this skin colour. So that is at our disposal to decide what's what. Most of this hair here, I would imagine, would be highlighted, so it's going to look much more of this orange shade rather than the, the kind of more red shades that we've been working with. And get some really good hairs in there. There we go. <laughs> yeah. My hair's all sticking up. Messy hair, don't care. A few wayward hairs here and there. Now this part in here is still bothering me. I really want some more contrast in there. So same thing again. I'm just going to build up the hair until it's it's got this kind of depth to it. So when I'm working on this part of the fur here, I'm paying particular attention to how close the hatching is together for those shaded areas. So there's a darker bit in here, but it's also quite dark down here. On the bottom half, I expect his fur generally to be darker. So because we're heading down in this direction, I'm paying particular attention to this part here. And like I did up at his hairline here, I'm just gonna pop in a bit of this walnut brown. And again, it helps us give it a little bit of definition and that variance between what's, what's this part of fur and what's his arm fur as well. Obviously we've got texture to help us with that too, but adding in that little bit extra never does anybody any harm as long as you don't go ham with it. I've added in a few stray hairs here in there as well just for well, just for funsies really <laughs> and I'm working this down to a darker area as well again this hair is very long and wayward and I'm expecting the edges of this hair to be more these lighter colors you know these some more, more sort of orangey rather than red colors so just to put that in place I'm going to start here with the terracotta and just mark that in first Again, this is more for my tiny little mind to, you know, just to make sure that things are right in my head rather than it being any sort of technical reason. And everybody does stuff like this differently, but this is just, just the way that works for me. Because if I know roughly where those lightest areas should be, then I can work around that. Sometimes I do it with dark colours as well. Sometimes it's easier to do it that way. But then I can go with my terracotta and we can work that in too. I think the key to doing this kind of thing as well is try and keep your motions as short and sharp as possible. You know, that nice flicky motion that I've been doing, but also as well, keep your pencil sharp. And again, that's why when I'm doing things like this, I prefer a slightly firmer pencil. I'm not really keen on soft pencils because you spend most of your time sharpening them rather than getting on with what you're trying to achieve. Uh, so yeah. I was actually, I was reading through some comments on one of the colouring groups on Facebook and not Tim's group, it was elsewhere. And there was, uh, you know, people were talking about different brands of pencils and hardness and softness. And someone said that they felt that the polychromos were a really hard pencil. And it's weird, I don't agree with that at all. It's definitely a firm pencil, like there's no doubt about that. But I don't find it, you know, when I think of a hard pencil, I think of Crayolas. They're pretty hard. I don't, I don't, for some reason, I don't put polychromos in that category at all. I really don't. It's very, very much down to preference and, you know, the kind of things that you like to do. Because I do quite a lot of animal drawings and colourings, I tend to favour the firmer pencils. And that's one thing I really like, especially if I'm doing stuff like this, is the, the Derwent Artist pencils. They are absolutely rock solid. Like, you're not going to get a harder artist grade pencil than that they are absolutely solid and they're really made for doing fine details like flicky motions for fur and they're absolutely great for it but as colorists or as a colorist i wouldn't touch them with a barge pole because it's a thankless task you know it's really really hard work so uh but if you if you like to do fur and things they, they they're pretty good i'm pretty sure they do like a, an earth tone set as well which is particularly helpful if you're into doing animals you know if you color a lot of animals you could just get the little set just for, you know, for the, the for effect. So I have the feeling this bit of hair is kind of like tucked in behind again. So I'm going to grab the dark sepia and I'll just flick out a few lines here. Again, just that sort of idea, the suggestion that it's tucked in behind there. Because this is higher up as well, I really want these light colours to be really obvious because if we've got a light source coming, you know, sort of this direction, this is going to be lit up like a like a lighthouse because the, the fur's obviously a wee bit finer so the light can go through it and reflect off all the different bits, all the different strands and facets. So we, yeah, that would be much more orangey. Almost, it's almost like he's got a ginger halo. <laughs> oh my. I do wonder at some of my own analogies sometimes. <laughs> 
Right, I'm reasonably happy with how that is. Again, I might go back and tweak it afterwards. But if I just take a wee zoom out just now, you can see we're coming along quite nicely. And you, you can start to see that dimension in the body parts and turning it really from, from this sort of grey scale into something that's in colour, but it's got a bit of shape to it, it's got a bit of life to it. Now, when we're talking about his fingers here, his hands, I'm going to go with roughly the same colours that I've used on his face and round his nose. So that's kind of, it's going to be quite difficult to do down here because we're going to have to blend this in with the fur on his arm but I'm confident that we can manage it without too much hassle. So as before I'm here with my light flesh pencil and I'm just going to put a wee coat of that down I'm just going to slap it down. Not being too careful, just get a layer of it down, everything's fine. There we go. Now if I grab my Delft blue again, I'm really thinking about where the shadows are and you can see that Tim's thought about that as well. Look at the amount of lines that he's got on each of these fingers and that is really to help us with the fact that not only is a finger a curved thing, you know, it's a curved object, but he's clinging on to something as well. And that can be really difficult to draw. And obviously Mr. Jeffs is very talented and he doesn't have to worry about things like that. But for, for us mere mortals, things like hatching can be very, very helpful. And just helping you, helping you help the observer, you know, so that they get their eye in and their, their brain understands what's going on. So with the Delft Blue Pencil, I'm following all of Tim's hatching. I'm still keeping a fairly light hand when I'm doing this though, but I am I'm being a little less subtle than I was on his face. But that is because there is very definite ridges and contours here. So again, just alternating here back to my light flesh pencil. Get a layer of that down over the top. And I've coloured in where their, where their nails are. Uh, they do have nails. Not, not like our nails, obviously, but they are there. So I wanted to make sure that they were, you know, they were, they had their place as well. I wanted to zoom in on this a little bit, but because it's right at the top of the image, I've, I've more or less got the colouring book like pressed up against me. So I'm having to kind of stoop over a little bit here. And we'll just go really gently, not touching every single part of, of the finger with the sepia, because we don't want it to, it is quite a muddy colour, you know, that skin tone, but we don't want it to be too muddy. So I'm just popping it in in a few places. And then I'm going to grab my magenta pencil just while we're here as well. And just get the chance to warm some of this up a wee bit again. Magenta pencils are great for that. Then I can grab my light flesh again and we can really start to blend this out a little bit. And it's the dark sepia here that's really keeping things calm. You know, it, it's kind of muting these colours out a bit so that your Delft blue and your magenta aren't absolutely like screaming from the page out at you saying, I don't belong here. Because if you see those two colours on their own, on a piece of paper, they're very, very bright and vibrant colours. They're lovely colours. So when you're using them in something like this, you have to either use them very sparingly or you have to balance them out with something else. And that's what I've used the, the dark sepia for. Right, let's have a wee zoom out now and just see what that looks like. So it's it's fairly similar to his skin tone, which I'm quite happy about. The, the skin on their hands is a bit sort of more leathery though, so I wouldn't expect it to be, you know, like this, you know, this skin in here it is going to be slightly different because they use their hands for everything, obviously. Yeah, hands and feet. I'm, I'm assuming they call them hands and feet the same way as humans, even though they're mostly all the same. <laughs> Okay, so when we're down in this hand here, as I was saying about blending into the hair, we'd really need to utilise this light flesh colour for this because it's it's very similar in tone to these colours that we've been using. So that'll help us get a transition. So we'll start with that. Okay, so moving on down to the bottom part of his body now. They do tend to have a lot more hair in their bottom half. And I think sometimes some of them look as if they're wearing like a pair of trousers. It's really, 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 really cute. So in this case, then we're going to weight our pencils, especially down in this area here, which you can see is really, really dark. We're going to use a lot more of the, the burnt, sienna and the sanguine rather than the terracotta. I get this burnt sienna down in these dark areas first and then switch to my sanguine pencil and then we've also got our walnut brown that we can use as well and we'll keep those for the darkest parts down here. So working on down in this leg section now and this is the same sort of situation as this really hairy part up here. We're going to have darker parts in here because this is like the solid part of the inside of his leg and then this is more like a fringe so that's going to be a lot lighter. Now just with a light hand, I'm going back to the sanguine and I'm going to cover this whole area in here. The hair is going to be quite dense in here. So we can cover that area off just to save ourselves a little bit of time. And then the subsequent layers, we can go back to that flicking motion and really build up the, 
you know, the texture. So grab my brown pencil again. Again, this is the burnt sienna and I'm just going to flip this round a little bit. My hand's starting to kind of cramp up a little bit and it's just a mild hand injury playing up. It is quite cold here today as well. Obviously it's December and I live in Scotland so that's expected. But because I've been sitting here for a little while I can feel myself starting to cramp up a bit. So just make the job a little bit easier on myself. Naturally this is going to be darker anyway aside from the fact that it's the inside of his leg because this part's hiding in behind the the branch here or the post that he's hanging on to and we'll maybe take a little tiny bit of the terracotta. So I've, I've naturally created like a highlighted area, area here so I'll maybe pop some of the terracotta in there just because we can, because why not? All right, so I'm gonna get the rest of his fur finished off and this leg is basically the same situation as the arm, so it doesn't really need much explaining. Just sticking with the same four pencils and working my way around gradually. I'm starting to think about all the other things I've got to do once I've finished coloring this and I don't really want to finish coloring this because that means I have to go and do like adulting. <laughs> Mama and Papa Jim are, they are arriving in the next few days and we have, we have isolated so that they are safe for coming up because Papa Jim, um, again I mentioned a couple of videos ago, he's been really really unwell so his immune system's not great and I wouldn't want to pass anything on to him. Uh, under the, the UK guidelines for Christmas we are allowed to mix at Christmas and we plan on doing so but it will just be mama and papa jim we're not going to be visiting or seeing anyone else and i think that's probably sensible but uh, my, my dad actually does some work for us here on the farm and he was coming up to work anyway uh, just because he's feeling a bit better but he's got to take it really easy he's not going to be doing a huge amount he's really coming for a rest more than work but he's still he's he's one of these people though and uh, mr jim's exactly the same my husband you know you tell them to kind of like take it easy and they nod their head and go okay and then go out and work 12 hours just because they can uh, so <laughs> papa jim is going to be under under strict surveillance for the next the next week or so but yeah so everything's been really quiet here we've not really been doing a lot we haven't been going out anywhere and that's just to make sure that we're as safe as can be. We, we do get tested regularly anyway. So, so far so good. Long may it continue. But I've just got a lot of, it's just stuff. You know, I've got bedrooms to get ready. And uh, I'll say that the final preparations for the kitchen. Because we have a lovely new fridge freezer that's uh, going in. But we can't put it in until the floor is down. And we've got another three days before the floor is going down. And then it's a case of a mad dash to get all the, all our festive food in so that we are ready to kick back and enjoy ourselves and perhaps have a tipple or three, you know, just because we do. But yeah, the, the, paint, the painting of the wall, that's been a bit of a disaster. Well, the entire kitchen's been a bit of a disaster, to be honest. But I, I feel as if I can see light at the end of the tunnel now. But if I have to look at another tin of white paint, it will be too soon. <laughs> The renovations will be continuing into the new year. Uh, we, we did, well, I say we, that's not true at all. Me, I, me, Jem. I really wanted to have the the downstairs part of the house finished in the, the first year that we were here and uh, we're, we're not even we're not even close but again um, covid and the pandemic and lockdowns and things that's had quite a lot to do with it and even getting suppliers you know stuff from suppliers isn't the easiest thing just now so it's it's been a lot slower than i thought it was going to be uh but we, i mean we have made progress we, we have done a lot but it's just not as much as i would have liked but I'm kind of getting weary of the whole renovation thing and I try not to think about the entire house because it makes me a little bit sad. <laughs> so I've got to keep going all this. We've got major work to do upstairs as well, but I'm assuming that we're not going to be getting into that probably until the middle of next year by the time we do everything else because we still have the outside of the house to tackle as well and that's not going to be a small job. I have found someone that's coming to help me with the, the garden which is nice because I don't even know where to start with that. I am not a green fingered person, so at least I've got a little bit of help with that. That's always, always nice. But it's just been hectic, absolutely hectic. I finally have everything in the kitchen and working. Though, like my kitchen does function now, which is good because for a while there I had like half a kitchen. Uh, so it's nice to be able to have a working stove and oven 
And we've we've got a temporary fridge freezer in just now. We've just like it's just like a little one. Uh, but we do have a big chest freezer out in one of our one of our outbuildings. So most of the the things that need frozen have been kept in there. We will get there. It's funny though because my parents always say like, oh, don't bother doing anything for us. It's only us that's coming up. And my mum and dad are like they're so low maintenance. They just kind of like come in and rumble about. And my mum just kind of like wanders about and cleans things. That's <laughs> just what she does. So uh, that's quite nice because she likes being in the kitchen. She likes to cook. Uh, so that's, the, you know, she comes and helps me with stuff like that. And my uh, my father has a, a bit of a, a bit of an obsession. He does have quite an obsessive personality. But he, he, he's got this fixation with cleaning shiny surfaces. And we literally sit the window cleaner out, you know, the spray window cleaner along with uh, a couple of cloths and some kitchen towel and we just kind of like leave it lying about and it doesn't take him long to pick it up and all of a sudden he's like polishing mirrors and it's quite funny. The backsplash on my my range in the kitchen is stainless steel as well so he's going to have an absolute field day with that. And I love having a stainless steel backsplash. I've, I've had tiles before and I hate it because I just think they're really difficult, you know, with the grout and everything. If you've had like a, a major you know, cooking incident and in our house it's bolognese, my family are Italian and we have a family recipe and when you've been making bolognese, see if it's been spitting and stuff, it's it goes everywhere and it's quite difficult to get off. So for the likes of that, it's it's much, much nicer to have stainless steel because you just wipe it and everything comes off. Whereas with tiles, you know, you've got to kind of poke about in amongst the grout and everything. I just can't be doing that. But in my old house, in, in my old house, I, I, I loved that kitchen with every ounce of my being. And I still miss that kitchen now. So I've tried to replicate as much as, of it as possible when we were redoing the kitchen in this house. And that was one of the things I was like, I want, a st want stainless steel behind the range. I am when it comes to things like that. I am f I am function over form every time. If it works, I'm happy. I don't care if it looks pretty or not, but it needs to be practical because having having a bigger house now and having a farmer for a husband and having three dogs, the amount of cleaning is colossal. It is absolutely colossal. And when I'm trying to squeeze that in and amongst work and obviously YouTubing as well and trying to find some time to art myself and do, you know, a couple of commissions, it's not that easy. So, yeah, definitely. And I've seen loads of tiled backsplashes and they look amazing. Like, they, they look super. But it's just, I just can't. I just, it's not worth it. It's absolutely not worth it. So I'm trying to leave a little paler patch here just because it's a knee. And that makes it look more like a knee. And we're into this blending situation again. So I'm just going to take this terracotta first. Get this up here. It's got really hairy feet. We've got a bit more of a defined area here as well, which is quite nice. Bit of an easier section to work with. In this crease here, I just want to pop a little bit of that sanguine in there. Okay, we'll do the rest of his feet now as well. And then we are well on our way to being finished. So I've got my light flesh here. We'll get that down. I'll just do both feet together. That down and then I'm grabbing my Delft Blue. Now remember, nice and light with this. Something else that's catching my eye that I keep looking at, and that's how I know when the picture's not right. I keep looking back up to this chest area and when you see it now compared to everything else, it really stands out. And I think I want to incorporate just a tiny little bit of this Delft Blue, even just around the edges and keep this nice sort of baby pink in the middle, just so that it all comes together a little bit more. But we'll deal with that in a minute. We'll carry on with these, uh, with these little feet first. So again, on this nail area, and again, I shall grab my sepia, and then I can grab my light flesh, and we can start the blendy blendy. And I'll grab this magenta. All right. Oh, he's looking really sweet. Okay, just before I change over to the next sort of group of pencils for this trunk, I just want to address this area that I was talking about in here. It's just, a, I know I wanted to keep it quite pure and clean, but it's just that little bit too pure and clean. So in these hatched areas that we had talked about before, I just want to add in a little bit of this Delft Blue. And it is just going to be a teeny weeny wee bit, just to pull it out and blend it a little bit. But what that also does is it helps this ear to pop out a wee bit. This is, I'm always banging on about contrast. <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. It's one of my favourite things to 
to wax lyrical on us, isn't it? So we've got to get contrast in there. There we go. Okay, now for this last section, that's us on the home stretch now. I've picked out some some different shades of brown so that it's not merging in with the with our little dude too much. So I want to start with brown ochre, and this is going to be my like my initial base layer, like I've done with other areas. So again, not being careful, not being fussy. We just want to get this down here. So the other two colours that I've picked out for this are, are Bistra and also Burnt Umber. And what we have to think about here is this is a cylindrical object, so we need to try and capture as much of that as possible, but also taking into account the fact that it's got a grain as well, which is beautifully already done for us by, by Tim. So in order to get that curvature, despite where your light source is coming from, you're still gonna have to have a darker edge. Now we've established that our light source is coming more from the right than the left. So the darker areas here aren't gonna be that dark. And all I'm doing is heading straight, I'm making a beeline for those sections where Tim has got the heaviest of his line work of his hatching so down around here and you just want to start making making moves now he's got some cross contour lines and these are the ones that go across the way and that's to help show that it's curved because there's those lines are slightly uh slightly curved and that's a great way to denote something is rounded now he's put in very light knots as well so i kind of want to grab a hold of them with my colored pencil too and it's easy to kind of get carried away with this and you know really spend a lot of time on it but what you have to remember that this is secondary to the subject of course you want it to look good that goes without saying but you don't need to agonize over it and take loads and loads of time you know trying to get it absolutely perfect uh, especially if you don't have a lot of time, like me, and never have a lot of time. So I'm trying to get a bit of a darker edge all the way along here. And onto the darkest pencil now, so this is the Burnt Umber. I'll just concentrate on this top section now, because I've kind of got the marks and things in that I want. But I just want to build up the richness of the colour now, so in doing that, I'll just pick up my lightest pencil again. And just go over everything not pressing hard and we never ever have to press hard just a medium pressure maybe leave a few areas a bit lighter if that's what you want you know if you want that little bit of a variation a bit of highlight and it's not going to be where he's clinging on that's going to be darker in there so again i'm deliberately keeping my pencil strokes going up and down because that is the way that the wood grain is running I always find something very comforting about trees and wood I think because there's no right and wrong way to do things really, um, as long as you sort of keep the grain visible, you can't really go wrong. I think that's why I find it relaxing. That's why I enjoy painting trees as well. <laughs> They're my trees. I do have a very distinctive style of, of colour cave, like gem tree. There is definitely one of those that's its own species, but just in general, I do find it very enjoyable, very, very enjoyable indeed. Okay, that's looking a bit more like it. So you can see the difference between the top part here and the bottom part now, you know, it's a world of difference. So it pays just to take your time a little bit. So I'm just gonna do the same now down here. Let's see what we can do. So back to this mid-tone because we've already got our first layer of our lightest color down. And I can start to pick out these areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we've got another knot here, so I'll try and kind of pick that out a bit. This is going to be a little bit darker just because it's kind of entangled in all these fingers. So I'm going to take the bistro over most of this if I'm honest and then we can go to our darkest pencil. So I'm going to be a bit more liberal with this here for the aforementioned reasons. Okay let's take a look at our little boy. Oh he's so lovely. There's only one other thing I want to add and it is literally just to up the cuteness level. I'm going to add in a tiny extra highlight on his eyes. Just a tiny little dot. Oh, he looks so cute. He's so, so cute. So that is our, our little finished boy for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I've had really good fun. I always enjoy colouring Tim's artworks. Uh, I would love to be able to draw like him. I think I've got a bit to go before I get there. But the nice thing about grayscale drawings is that they don't take long. So if you are pushed for time, you can still get something that looks really good without having to spend days and days on it. Now, just to put you in the picture, this video is probably going to be about an hour long. My, my colouring chats usually are. This has taken me about 
two and a half hours. Yeah, about two and a half hours start to finish to colour, which is not a long time to finish a colouring page really, especially when you've used as many layers as we have. So if this tickles your fancy and it's something that you are interested in, we do have the giveaway for a copy of the Endangered Animals book. It is in PDF form, so you download it and you can print it off as many times as you want, as Tim said, but also you can put it on the paper that you want. So if you would like to win a digital download copy of Endangered Animals by Tim Jeffs, all you have to do is take a little wander down to the comments section and tell me what you would like to see Tim draw more of, what type of animal is your favourite and you know what do you like to colour most out of all of his animals. So that's all you have to do, just tell me your animal down in the comments and you'll be entered into the draw to win the digital download of endangered animals that Tim showed us at the start. The entries for all the cave mist giveaways are open until the 29th of December. So you have until then, if you want to go and check out some of his work beforehand, and the winners will be announced on New Year's Day. So best of luck if you're going to enter. Thanks very much for joining me today, guys. This has been great fun. So once again, a big thank you to Tim for being a really good sport and being generous to offer this prize as part of our Cave Miss giveaway. I'd also like to say a special thank you to Joe Warren. And Joe runs the Facebook group for Tim's Colourings. I shall leave the link to that in the description along with the link to Tim's Etsy store as well where you can buy copies for digital download of most of his books. Uh, jo has been amazing, she's really active and she's really engaging so if you haven't visited Tim's Facebook group I strongly suggest it because it's a really friendly place and Jo has certainly made me feel welcome and she's like superwoman, she organises competitions and she's the first person to encourage people and really take an interest in what other people are doing as well so thanks to you as well Jo, thank you for making me feel welcome and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this video too. Okay guys that is it for today, I am going to leave you with this and I am going to go and start painting my kitchen yeah you, you can tell i'm really excited about that and we will see you back in the cave tomorrow for another video so enjoy the rest of your day everyone and bye for now